days on this day and every day. At this time, the choir is going to bless us with their initial selections.
Amen, amen. The blood still works. How many of y'all know that the blood still works this morning? Amen. The choir will lead us in the next selection.
Amen. It's prayer time, church. And the list is long, but we know that our God hears and answers all prayer. As Deacon Romeo Smith comes forward, the names on our prayer list this morning, Irene Logan, Janice Barnes, Carol Squires, uh, the family of Miss Joan Crawley, whose service was yesterday at Morningstar in Burrowsville, Mariah, Brother Bernard Parker, Joyce Green, Brother Donnell Stevens, Brother Ferris, Brother Albert Cook, Sister Sarah Owens, who's in hospice care, this is one of my aunts, my oldest aunt. Jeanette King, Dorothy Porter, Audrey Hall, continued me to pray for Mary Wilson and family and the death of her grandson. Brother Joe Green, he was the one that was shot a few weeks ago and he's getting better. Y'all give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Family of Elder Walter Gary in his passing. He was an assistant pastor at Faith and Hope Church of God in Christ, and he's spoken here before. Continue to keep his family in your prayer. We don't know what your needs are. We don't know what your burdens are. Take them to the Lord and leave them there. Deacon Smith. Thank you, Lord. Good morning, Tabernacle. God, we come to you once again, just, just thanking you for your many blessings. But most of all, God, we thank you for just allowing us to see another day. God, a day that was not promised to us, God. But you saw it fit, God, that you would allow us, Father, to be able to walk in and worship you. God, we thank you for that. Because everybody, Father, that laid down last night didn't wake up this morning. And you decided, Father, to put us in that number. And we're so thankful and grateful, Father, for what you're doing in our lives. God, we ask you right now, Father, everybody that's been mentioned, that's on the sick list, that's on the bereavement list, Everybody that's mentioned, God, God, we ask you, Father, to wrap your arms of protection around all of them, Father. God, the ones that are sick in their body, God, we ask him for a healing right now. God, the ones that are just so low, Father, we're asking, Father, that you raise them up right now. Father, the ones that have lost loved ones, Father, Father, that had no idea that they would be losing to their loved ones, Father. Father, we ask you right now, Father, to wrap your arms of protection around them right now, God, as only you can. God, sometimes we take things for granted. We take every second for granted. We take every minute for granted. We take every hour for granted. Everything, Father, that you're doing in our lives, Father, we just take it for granted. God, and we're asking you right now, Father, to help us, Father, to be more like you. Help us, Father, to be more compassionate. Help us, Father, to show more love. God, what if this is our last day? Help us, Father, to realize, Father, that you put us here, Father, to do a work and we've been called, Father, to do a work that's pleasing in it to your sight. God, whatever we do, Father, please let us do it as we're doing it unto you. It doesn't matter who it is. The least of them, Father, let us do it as if we're doing it unto you. God, because you're the author and finisher of our faith. Father, you're the one that gives us all. You're the one that supplies our needs. You're the one that supplies our desires. You're the one that supplies our wants. God, and if we can't do it unto you, 
who can we do it to? God, I thank you for this day, Father. I thank you for protecting not only me, Father, but my church family, Father. I thank you, God, for protecting my personal family, Father. God, each and everything that we do, I'm asking you, Father. I'm pleading with you, Father, to please let us do it with the love of God in our heart. God, I love you today. I adore you today. And God, if I love you and if I adore you, I've got to show the sign. I've got to let a dying world know, Father, that you're the one. You're the author and finisher of our faith, God. You're the author and finisher of our faith. God, I thank you, Father, for everything that you're doing, Father. I thank you, Father, for ordering our steps. I thank you, Father, for blessing us and keeping us, Father. I thank you, Father, for protecting us, Father. I thank you, Father, for helping us, Father, to lean and depend on you. God, when we don't know anywhere to go, we can always lean and depend on you. God, I thank you, Father, for being my refuge. I thank you, Father, for being my shelter. I thank you, Father, for being my leaning post. I thank you, Father, for being my encourager. I thank you, Father, for being everything that I need, even when I don't know, Father, that I need it. God, I'm going to ask you right now, Father, to put more of your spirit in me. I'm going to ask you right now, Father, to put more of your spirit in us, Father, so everybody that sees us sees God. Everybody that sees us sees a portion of God. God, what we do on earth is important, Father. What we do on earth is important, God, in order to help us, Father, to have a home in your kingdom. God, I bless you today, Father. I adore you today, Father. I magnify you today, Father. I love you, God, today to no end. God, I'm asking you right now, Father. I'm pleading with you right now, God. Help us to be more like you. God, love covers a multitude of sins. Love covers a multitude of sins. If we can't show love, what can we show? God, if we're trying to be an example for you, it starts with love. God, I thank you, God. I thank you, God. I thank you, God, for me just being able to walk in the doors of Tabernacle, Father, with a portion of health and strength. God, you didn't have to give it to us, but you did. And I thank you for it. I thank you. And I praise you, God. I praise you as I go to my seat, God. God, I'm asking you right now, Father, under the sound of my voice, if there's anybody, Father, that's lacking, God, I ask you to supply the need. If there's anybody in hurting, God, I'm asking you to fill that void. If there's anybody that's sick, I'm asking God if it's in your will to heal them. God, because we can't do it by ourselves. And once we realize that all of our help comes from you, God, we can continue on to bless you even the more. I praise you, God, for this day, a day I've never seen before. And I bless you this day and forevermore. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Everybody say, thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God.
Amen. Lord, do it for me. At this time, we would like to rec recognize our visitors. If we have anyone visiting with us on this morning, visiting for the first time, we're not going to make you say anything. We just want to stand up, give you a little something from the church. If we're going to ask our visitors, if you would, just stand at this time. Amen. 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 So good to see you here this morning and glad that you chose Tabernacle as the place of worship on this morning. We hope that you will be blessed by the service and blessed by the word of God as well as the songs. Tabernacle as it is our custom to our visitors, so happy to have you. Please, please come again. Amen. You may be seated. Give our visitors some love. Thank you for coming on this morning. Our morning announcements, um, we do have Sunday school and new members class each Sunday at 945 in the Community Life Center. Breakfast, breakfast is served immediately after the 8 a.m. service in the Community Life Center. $5 donation for adults, children, and visitors eat free. The men's ministry will be sponsoring a canned goods and non-perishable food, food drive through December the 10th, 2023. Please place those items that you want to donate in the vegetable. In the vegetable. The Downtown Churches United are also in need of donations of gloves, scarves, and hats um, for their Christmas feeding. On the second Friday of December, there will be a box in the vegetable for that. If you have any questions, please see Sister Linda Gregory. Our military day will be held on next Sunday at the 8 a.m. and 11 a.m. service. The 8 a.m. speaker will be Dr. Vadrika Epps of the Mount Calvary Baptist Church. The 11 a.m. speaker will be Reverend Larry Williams, a recently retired pastor from the Tidewater area. There's also a little small sheet for those of you who are veterans. If you have not filled it out, um, that sheet just adds some information for all veterans. If you have not filled it out, please see Deaconess Michelle Goins or myself, and we can make sure that you get that form. Sister Goins, if you would stand. Amen. Thank you. On Thanksgiving morning, um, November the 23rd, we will be having our Thanksgiving Day service at 10 a.m. here in the sanctuary. On December the 8th, the women's ministry, ministry are inviting the ladies of Tabernacle to, sparkling, to a sparkling red table talk from 6 p.m. to 8.30 in the Community Life Center. There will be um, active communication, food, fun, and fellowship. Please RSVP in the church vestibule with your name, phone number, and email by November the 20th. Uh, please see Reverend Pam Cooper, Sister D. Johnson, or Sister Juanita Thorne for more information. In our youth corner this morning, the Boys to Men Ministry will be meeting from 6.30 to 8 p.m. Um, this, on this coming um, Tuesday. This meeting is open to young men, 4 to 18 years old. Dinner will be served at night. If you know any young men who need some help or just need a ment some mentorship, please bring them out on Tuesday night at 6.30. On Wednesday night, November the 15th, there will be youth Bible study from 6.30 to 7.45. Bible lessons, food, fun, and fellowship. Please bring your young people out to youth Bible study. We also have the angel tree going on now. If you know of families that are in need, um, especially for the Christmas holidays, um, the angel tree is available for children under the age of 18. Um, the last day to do that request is on um, November the 19th. Please go to the church website and all the information is available there. Any youth interested in attending the Petersburg Symphony Orchestra event on December the 3rd at 4 p.m., see, please see Sister Scott um, by the end of service today. Sister so Scott, wave your hand so they can see who you are. Amen. Right at the door. The youth ministry is also planning a sneaker ball, so stay tuned. More information is coming up on that. And um, we are accepting report cards if your child or your grandchild has made the honor roll in this past nine weeks. Please have them returning their report card no later than November the 26th, and we do have a special gift for them. Amen? Amen. Church, it's offering time. Well, y'all don't sound too happy. It's offering time. Amen. Why don't you turn to your neighbor to your left or your right and say, Neighbor, God's been good to me. 
I don't think that neighbor believed you. Why don't you turn to your neighbor on the other side? Neighbor, God's really been good to me. Amen. If you know God's been good to you, put those hands together and give him some praise. As we receive our offering, the ushers are coming. Choir is singing. Officers are receiving. And you, the congregants, are giving as God has blessed you to give. God bless you.
Amen. As we continue to um, build in our capital campaign, we want to thank Sister Denise Lambert for her donation this morning in memory of her mother, Lacolia Edwards, and her grandmother, Mabel White, a donation in the amount of $200 for the capital campaign. Amen. Y'all give us some love. At this time, we're going to ask if Sister Scott, if you would, lead us in our offertory prayer. Every head bowed. Dear Lord, we just want to say thank you. Thank you for the small gifts that were given today. Dear Lord, we know that they will be used to uplift your kingdom here on earth. For those who did not have it to give, we know you will give it to them to be blessed on another time. We thank you for all the many blessings that you bestowed upon us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. standing our scripture reading this morning will be coming from Matthew the 26th chapter beginning at the 26th verse Matthew the 26th chapter beginning at the 26th verse that's Matthew the 26th chapter beginning at the 26th verse and you'll find these words and as they were eating Jesus took bread, blessed it, and break it, and gave it to the disciples, and says, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup and gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sin. Of sin excuse me. But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine, until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out into the Mount of Olives. The word of God for the people of God, you may be seated. Amen. We are so glad it's preaching time, and we're so glad to see Dr. Diggs in the house on this morning. Y'all give our pastor some love. As the choir comes and give their sermonic selection, the next voice you'll be here, that you will hear will be the voice of our pastor, Dr. Robert A. Diggs, Sr. Hear ye him.
the people of God say amen. Anybody glad to be in the house of the Lord one more time? Uh, we glorify, magnify God. We thank God for traveling mercy. We thank God for forgiving us of our sin. So I just finished sinning. As I was coming down 95, and I didn't notice any signs that posted any any traffic limits, so I thought I was on the Autobahn somewhere in Europe, but we made it here. Give God praise, and we thank him this morning. On yesterday, I went to Cracker Barrel, and I was there at 7. I was one of the first to get there. I ate an early breakfast celebration of Veterans Day. I want all of our veterans who are here today to stand. All of our veterans who are here today, give them some love. Thank God for you and for your service, sacrifice to a nation called America. And after eating mass quantities of cholesterol and grease, I said, I'm going home and take me a good nap. I'm going to sleep most of the morning. But as soon as I was good in my nap, I got a phone call from Reverend Dr. Elijah L. Campbell of the Mango Hicks Baptist Church. Y'all ever heard of a church named Mango Hicks? It's up behind King's Dominion, and he wanted me to come and do his ninth anniversary because... The preacher that was to come got COVID, was sick, ill, and he asked me to please do him a favor. And so when somebody asks you to do you a favor, that means you got to get somebody to do you a favor. And so I called James Timon Island and said, hey, I need a favor. And so he preached at 8 this morning. They said he preached up dust on a muddy road. <laughs> Y'all give, give Reverend Tommy Nyland some love today. Diggins told me I should give him a certificate of license so that he can stop being a jack leg preacher. <laughs> and so we thank him for standing. And there's a word from the Lord found at the Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 26th chapter. It's already been read in your hearing, but I like to relax in the scripture, so we'll read it again in your hearing. It's good to see uh, Terry Caesar done brought company to church today. At the 26th verse, you find these words. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread, blessed, and broke it, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body. Then Jesus took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. For this is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for many for the remission of sins. But I say to you, I will not drink of this fruit of the vine from now on until the day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Word of God for his people. I want to reason with you on a message entitled, A Meal of Remembrance. A Meal of Remembrance. Everybody repeat after me. This is, this is a, meal a meal to remind me, to remind me of, the of the death of Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for this blessed occasion. We thank you for allowing us to gather in your house, but most importantly, we thank you for allowing us to gather again around your table. Allow us to sup. Allow us to drink. Allow us to remember you, the one who died on a hill, and yet before you died, you gave us something to remind us of your sacrifice as a substitute for our sins. And we just stop by to say thank you. Educate us. 
In other words, allow the Holy Spirit to edify us. We ask it all in Jesus' name and for his sake. And for the sake of the church gathered, amen. A meal of remembrance. This is the most sacred day out of all the worship days that we celebrate month after month. It is Second Sunday. It's Second Sunday for us that we celebrate the Eucharist, Communion, the Lord's Supper, the Last Supper. These are all terms to describe the bread and wine that's placed on the table every second Sunday for us as we celebrate the Lord's death by drinking symbolically grape juice or wine that allows us to remember the blood he shed for us on a hill called Golgotha the place of the skull. We also break bread, not wonder bread. And yet, yes, wonder bread for us because, oh, what a wonder that has been wrought for us through the forgiveness of sin because the Lord decided to send his own son. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son so that whosoever believeth in him. For this is a meal we remember as believers because he became the substitute, the sacrifice and savior for all of us who gather as believers in him. A meal of remembrance. It's a meal of remembrance that comes about with no announcement. It's while they're in an upper room. And oftentimes, as the prayer was prayed, we take things for granted. Uh, what do you mean we take things for granted? When our ancestors in 1890, everybody shot a long time ago, had mined, moat, blocks, several homes away from here in the backyard, placed them in a wagon, a wagon drawn by mules, and bring those blocks to this sacred spot and erect a sanctuary. Unlike most sanctuaries, it is not erected with this level of the sanctuary on the ground. We don't walk one, two, three steps up and be leveled to the plane that's around us. We have to walk up a number of steps to get to a preliminary foyer. Then there are 10 more steps to get to the level where we find ourselves in the sanctuary. Why? Because they, not with degrees and education like we have now, but they, first slaves settled free Pocahontas Island, erected this building so that the sanctuary would be at the second level. Yeah. That this sanctuary that we gather in represents an upper room. And isn't it strange that they also wanted to mimic, wanted to uh, cause us to be in a state of wonder, them being gone a long time ago, that in a secret passageway, there's a button that you can press and it causes the lights to dim. Joyce dim the lights. And Joyce takes her old hand, turns it around behind her. She said, make me do that. He know I got arthritis. And she presses a button and the lights go dim. Touch that same button and elevate it now upward, Joyce. And you watch the lights as they begin to shimmer to represent the light of the world. Anybody in here know that Jesus is that light? 
And they wanted us to experience like they did then, now. The experience of remembering a meal whereby the disciples sat with Jesus in a dimmed, lit up a room that they had borrowed from somebody else. And they were celebrating the Seder meal. Seder meal is a meal that the Jews would eat to commemorate their exodus from Egypt. Ours is to commemorate a meal that the Lord left. I said Eucharist, Lord's Supper, uh, the Last Supper, communion. And ours is to fellowship around bread for an exodus from our old nature, the Adamic nature. An exodus from that nature into a new nature, the nature of Jesus Christ. Anybody in here glad that you got a new nature? Oh, yes, you wrestle with your old nature, but you got a new nature. And with that new nature, you got a new name. And with that new name, you need to know that name has been written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. And you've got a place to celebrate, yes, this fruit of the vine again. And you'll do it at the, the rapture in the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. Is there anybody in here glad that you're royalty? That your king's kids, that you have reserved for you on the other side, a seat at the Lord's table where he desires to, to, to eat of the fruit again. A meal of remembrance. Three things and I'm going to leave you alone. A meal of remembrance that reminds us when we serve. A meal of remembrance that reminds us what we serve. And a meal of remembrance that reminds us why we sing. Why we sing. What we serve. When we serve. What do you mean when we serve? Matthew 26, 26 says, While they were eating, Jesus took some bread. And after a blessing of it, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take it. This is my body. Now, I want to pause parenthetically. And uh, let you know that these are men. They're intelligent, grown men. Uh, they're not trained men other than Matthew, who's a tax collector, and, and obviously Luke, who um, is a physician. But they all have what I call common sense. And because they have been chosen by Jesus Christ, they obviously, Darren, have holy common sense. And when the Lord says, I want you to eat this bread, which is my body. And the Lord says, I want you to drink this wine, which is my blood. They, like most of us, would have thought, uh, is he requiring of us that we become cannibals? But the Lord was using the bread and the wine symbolically. It's a symbol of his body that's bread. And a symbol of his blood, that's wine, or what is in the cup. Now, I know y'all came to get one of them shouting messages, you came to feel good, but sometimes, in order for the body of Christ to be edified, you got to learn something. You sit around this table every second Sunday, second Sunday, because the pastor of this church had two churches. The first Sunday, he was at Shiloh, and there he served communion. And on second Sunday, he was here at Tabernacle, and he served communion. We became a second Sunday church. Why? Because the itinerant pastor who had more than one church had to serve communion at one on one Sunday and communion at the other on another. Y'all hearing what I'm saying? And so when we gather around this table before we eat, just like you're taught at home, before you eat, you what? And so there is for us a prayer of consecration. It reminds us while we are serving the bread and wine that before we do anything, we've got to pray. It's a prayer of consecration whereby we pray that the Lord would take the bread, that the Lord would take that which is in the cup, that he would sanctify it, that he would now use it not for a physical purpose, but for a spiritual purpose. We consecrate through prayer the elements, but we also consecrate ourselves. 
All of us are able to come before this table because we profess with our mouths Jesus Christ. He's able and just to forgive you right then in the moment. A prayer of consecration all because we have a prayer of confession. I, I pray that the Lord know that I believe in him with all my heart, mind, and strength. Is there anybody in here, God, you had a profession of faith that is, for me, a prayer of what I call confession. You confess the Lord as your Savior. You confess your sins. And because the Lord is your Savior and forgives you for your sin, all of your sins are removed from you as far as the east is from the west. I don't know how far the east is from the west, but it's a mighty long way. Is there anybody in here glad that your sins are a mighty, mighty, mighty long way from you? All because of the mercy of God. All because of the love of God. All because of the grace of God. His unmerited favor has has washed you and made you clean. What can wash me and make me whole? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What? Is there anybody in here glad that you got a what in the person of the Savior that keeps on washing you? Every time you ask the Lord for his forgiveness, anybody glad that he has a window of heaven that he opens up and keeps on forgiving you? He's not a God of another chance. He is a God of chance after chance after chance after chance. Prayer of consecration, a prayer of confession, but a prayer of cleansing. I come in here just like you, and I stand in need of cleansing. And the only one that can cleanse me is God by his mercy and his grace. Some writer says, amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Oh, you wretches are looking at yet another wretch. Would he devote his sacred head for such a worm? Not just a wretch, but a worm. All of us are worms, and uh, uh, we find ourselves just like a serpent in the dust of the ground. But I came by to let somebody know that we got a God that specializes in dust and God has a way of dressing up dust and God has a way of coming back to collect dust and cause dust to become resurrected bodies and the dead in Christ shall rise first and they that remain shall be caught up to meet him in the air. And I want you to know this is a reminder of what God has already done so that he might collect us. In the middle of the air. Y'all excuse me. I just, I just feel, like, feel like preaching today. It's a meal of remembrance. That reminds us when we serve. But secondly it's a meal of remembrance that reminds us what we serve. Look at 27 and 28. And when Jesus had taken the cup and given thanks. Everybody shall give thanks. If you don't learn anything else from Jesus today, every time he took something, with that something to be a blessing to somebody else, before he gave it, he gave thanks. Got 5,000 men sitting in grass plus women and children. The Bible says he takes the bread and two fish and he gives thanks. Ain't had much of nothing, but what did he do? Give thanks. Look at all what you got. The prayer this morning, we take so much for granted. But the little bit that you think you got, which is more than enough, always remember and be reminded to give thanks. That wasn't even in the sermon. I gave you for free. Comma. He gave it to his disciples saying, drink from it, all of you. Now I want to I want you to see the drink from it, all of you. It's not a, not a suggestion or a recommendation. This, in the middle of this meal that he institutes, the Lord's Supper, the Eucharist, the Last Supper, communion, it's a command. He says, take it, all of you, for this is my body, of the new covenant which is poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. They're eating the side of the meal, but there's a shift. They're eating the side of the meal, but there's a shift to 
uh, anemia. They're eating the side of meal, but there's a shift from the old to the new. They're eating the side of meal, but in the middle of the meal, there's a shift. I want to give you something new. The old covenant is a covenant of a rainbow. I will not destroy the earth with rain anymore. But I want to shift now to let you know that I'm giving you a new covenant, not a rainbow. With all the colors in the spectrum, but there's one color and it's a crimson color. It's the crimson stain of my blood. Today, when you lift up that cup and hold it towards any window in any direction, you'll see a stain that's crimson that washes away your sin and makes you as white as snow. Uh, he shifts, but then he says, this represents a new covenant in my blood. You see the shift? But you ought to always hear what the Lord is saying. It's not just for Peter, it's not just for Philip, it's not just for Bartholomew, it's not just for John or Thomas or uh, uh, for Judas who's at the table and his mind isn't even on what's at the table. And some folk that are around the table don't have their minds on what's on the table or what has happened in order for the table to be in their presence. Mind on their cell phones, texting their boo, trying to figure out where they're going to get. Uh, to go and eat after making reservations while they're sitting here texting on their phone. No, no, Judas is there at the table while this supper is being instituted and he's already plotting that he's going to leave and take 30 pieces of silver and betray the Lord. Everything and everybody around the table ain't about who set the table. And yet God gives you the invitation while you're in the midst of the table in the fellowship of his disciples to, to understand what he did for you out on a hill not called Golgotha but a hill now called Calvary. Nails in his hands. His brow with thorns and blood running down. The night before, all night long, they beat him with a reed and by his stripes. We've all been healed. 35 times, he scourged, his flesh is torn. He's weakened. They pull out his beard one hair at a time. They mock him and call him everything except the son of God. Then they march him out to the Dilla Della Rosa. They put a cross on his back. They march him up to Dilla Della Rosa and they got to get a black man to help him. Simon of Cyrene, he looked like y'all. He's the one underneath the cross. A cross that brings deliverance, a cross that brings salvation, a cross that brings a new covenant, a cross. An old rugged cross. And he bore that cross. Splinters in his back, that is back that's already bleeding. They place nails in his feet, they pierce him in the side, they take him to the bar of tomb of Joseph, and he lays there the seed, the seed that's buried. Oh, they made a mistake when they took him up. He said, If I, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men and women under myself. But they made even a greater mistake when they took him down, put him in the ground, and the seed. Mm, more fruit and I'm looking at that fruit today you ought to know who you are in Christ seeds that bear fruit and when we come to this table ours is to remind ourselves of what the Lord has done for us I ought not be the only one in my soul that cries Thank you, Christ, thank you, thank you, Lord, for dying for my sins and drawing me unto yourself. He shifts, he says, and he shares, he breaks the bread and he says, take this and divide it among yourselves. Don't you forget that when these diggings come and they gather what's on this table, they go and divide it among disciples. 
What? The bread that represents his body. What? The cup that represents his blood. And all of us partake of it. As forgiven sinners that have become, yes, his children, but most of all, his friends. And when Jesus calls you friend, oh, no greater love than a friend who would lay down his life for his friends. Meal of remembrance. Oh, that reminds us when we serve. That reminds us what we serve. That lastly reminds us of why we sing. Verse 30 says, after singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. I don't know what the hymn was, but it was a communion song. Every time we come on a second Sunday, we've got a communion song. Let us break bread together on our knees. Let us drink wine together on our knees. It's our communion song. And today, in this, the most sacred day of all the month, we come and celebrate him who died. Him who was raised on the third day morning. Him who has all power in his hand. And because of him, we've got a communion song. Because of him, we have a commemorating song. It's a song all about what he has done for us. It's a communion song. A commemorating song. But it's a celebrating song. Anybody in here glad? On my knees I praise his holy name and I thank him for what he's done for me. I want to thank him for the bread. I want to thank him for the wine. But I've got a song in my heart to thank him for saving my soul. So today, when we sing the song, let us break bread together on our knees. When we sing the song, let us drink wine together on our knees. When we sing the end of the song, let us praise God together on our knees. Let us sing the song, being reminded of what the Lord has done for us today this message goes out to somebody that cannot come to the table this message is especially preached in order to reach and teach somebody about Jesus Christ the only way you can come and eat from this table is you've got to profess with your mouth Jesus Christ as Lord. Having professed because of your belief in your heart as an outward sign, you then come as a candidate to be baptized. You go to the water in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, and you're raised in newness of life. If you want to be able to come to this table, this sacred table, this communion table, lost, last supper table, uh, the Lord's supper table, the Eucharist, the communion table, it's because you have relationship with Jesus Christ as a baptized believer. If you've not been baptized, we invite you today to give your life to Christ, and then you'll be able to come and sup from his table. Do you need to profess Jesus today? Everybody shout, I believe in Jesus. Jesus. And if you said that and you mean it, and you've not been baptized, that's an invitation for you to come. Don't be ashamed. You ain't got to wait on mama and daddy. Don't be afraid. Just get up. Come give your life to Christ. Be baptized. And sup at this table for the rest of your lives. But more importantly, to be able to sup at the table when he the Lord in his kingdom gathers us together for communion for the very first time. Will you come? Profess Christ. Come as a candidate for baptism. The choir is going to sing you home. Don't be ashamed or afraid. We beg you to come. We beseech your coming.
David Donald's going to hold his arms up and open until somebody comes. He might have to pass out today. Don't be afraid. Don't be ashamed. Come give your life to Christ. Come as a candidate for baptism. We beg you. Most important thing you can do in all of your life is to give your life to Christ. Come be baptized because of your belief in him. God said, Amen. All the children that have not been baptized, if you would run on down here, all children that have not been baptized.
Let us pray. Father God, we ask now that you consecrate our hearts, that you forgive us of all of our sins. Edify your body by the power and the presence, a special anointing of your Holy Spirit. Cleanse us, wash us with haste, create in us a clean heart. And restore unto us the joy of thy salvation. Consecrate us and consecrate now this bread, this wine. Let it be used not for anything else but a reminder of your death. We ask now, O God, that you would help us to feel your presence. To even know your pain, your pain that has brought about our pardon. In Jesus' name we pray and all the people of God said amen. amen. I want all of us to know that back in the day we didn't have these highfalutin cups. We had, had little plastic cups and we put grape juice or wine. We served wine for a long time at Tabernacle. Most of the folk came to Tabernacle because we were going to drink real wine. And Diggin Nyland came to me and said, hey, we might have somebody that's, you know, come from a journey away from alcoholism and we might be causing them to have a taste that might set them back. And he said, I want to go to grape juice. And so that's how we migrated to, to grape juice. But on top of your little cup, there's a little plastic see-through. You can see the bread. You got to peel it back. And then having peel that back, the second phase of it is to peel back the next layer so you can get to uh, the substance that's inside the cup. There might be somebody in here that didn't know that. And so it's my responsibility to make certain you do. As we pray that prayer of consecration, we go out to the Mount of Olives singing a hymn, and what we're going to do today is the hymn threefold, and we'll partake of the bread unlike our traditional mode. So let us sing together. Let us break bread together on our knees. Let us break bread together on our When I fall on my knees with my face to the rising sun, O oh Lord, have mercy on me. Let us take, eat all of it. Let us drink wine together on our knees. Let us drink wine together on our knees. When I fall on my knees with my face, in some, oh Lord, have mercy on me. Let us drink wine together. When he died on the cross, he died for you, he died for me. He shed not the blood of an ox or a turtle dove or a pigeon. He served the blood, shed the blood not of a ram or a lamb or an oxen, but he shed his own blood for the atonement. Everybody shout my, of my sin. And so the real reason we sing the song at the end is to celebrate what he has done. Everybody shout for me. Let us praise God together. Stand up on your feet. Oh, let us. 
God's praise God together on our knees when I fall on my knees with my face to the rising sun oh Lord have mercy on me We have a praise report this morning. She's coming by way of experience of grace, Sister Eleanor Wright. If you would stand, Sister Eleanor Wright, give her some praise this morning. Amen. We're delighted and overjoyed that she came. Y'all can sit down if you like. You can sit down. I'm sorry I made y'all stand up. But I want you to sing your song for yourself while you stood up in the presence of the Lord. And so... Tabernacle with arms open wide. Repeat after me. Eleanor Wright. Right. So, so glad. God led you to us. To us. We your new church family. Church. So, glad. So, glad. so glad. So glad. So glad you came. So glad. You're a part of us now. Of us. We your new church family. Church. Welcome once. Welcome twice. Welcome three times. In the name of Jesus Christ. Give sister Eleanor right some love and extend to her a right hand of fellowship uh, I'm just excited because I got another new member anybody else glad you got another member of our church welcome welcome and welcome hey we want to thank everybody that pitched in to help pass out this morning I had to do a favor for a friend and we thank all of you for assisting me and uh, being able to go to Mango Hicks Baptist Church up in Caroline County. I want to thank our sound room ministry. I don't even know who's up there. Look like Maurice is running the sound system this morning. We done gone down to the bottom, bottom, bottom of the barrel. But we want to thank Brother Singleton and Brother Brown. Our media ministry give them some love today. <laughs> Melvin is in the house. We appreciate all that you and Barty do. Give them some love. I want to thank our security <laughs> ministry. And I don't know, security minister got on a red mask. Is that supposed to alarm us this morning? He got on a red mask. She got on a blue mask. Everybody else in security ain't got on no mask. I ain't sure what they're trying to tell us. But give our security ministry some love today. I want to thank our ushers. They've done a marvelous job. Where they be at? I want all them ushers to come down front, run in church. Just prance on down here uh, like you can't help yourself. Our special guests that are leaving, give them some love. We appreciate these young people that came to be a part of our service. I want to thank Elijah, Pierre, B.B. Um, um, uh, King, Aaron, um, did I say Trayvon, um, Brother Farrar. I want to thank these musicians. They've done a marvelous job. Give them some love today. Amen. One thank Shelton Wayne and these voices that have assembled in black today. They're in uniform. We appreciate them. And we thank them for coming out on Thursday for that rehearsal and everything that uh, was done behind the scenes to make this service a uh, glorified effort for the Lord. Give our ushers some more love today. You may go. Amen. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Train up a child while the child is young so that when they become older, they won't depart from what we've trained them. Our deacons and deaconess have done a marvelous job. Stand up, y'all. Give these deacons and deaconess some special love. I got the bestest leaders in the whole wide world. Maurice Singleton, you be doing everything as a church administrator, running the sound room, getting us on the radio, taking the money to the bank. Well, thank you for all that you do. If I knew, might we stand on our feet all over the sanctuary? Amen. Coach Faison, you good? Amen. You want to pray again? Might get a presidential job next time. You want to pray? No, okay. You good, Jerry? Amen. See these two little girls right here? Come up to the, to the, to the rail. I got all of these cards. People went. Oh, they won't come all the way down. 
Y'all, don't be scared. Amen. Come up to the rail. But they did a, a special card. They said they want some peppermint. They're coming all the way down. They did this special card with the two of them beside me. And, and I figured that's how they want it to be. So I'm going to let them do it today. But the card has got me at the center. And one's holding my hand on this side. And the other one's holding my hand on the other side. Come on up here. Yeah, it's one of those beautiful. And they colored it with crayon. And gave me all this inspirational stuff that makes me much it. <laughs> Ain't they pretty? They did the card. I'm going to, amen. And so today, before you leave, I want you to bow your head. And I want you to say a little itty-bitty prayer to the Lord. You know what you're going through, what you're experiencing. He hears itty-bitty prayers. You might be praying for somebody that's in the hospital getting ready to have emergency surgery. Pray your little itty-bitty prayer. That person you're praying for may have blessed you immensely beyond measure. Sunday after Sunday, song after song. Say a itty bitty prayer for that person. Don't know her name to call because she don't want y'all to know her name to call. But pray a little itty bitty prayer for her. Say a little itty bitty prayer for somebody else. Then say a little itty bitty prayer for yourself. Now may the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, the love of God the Father, and the grace of his darling Son, Jesus the Christ, rest, rule, and abide, henceforth, now, and forevermore. And all the people of God say amen. amen. Y'all can get your candy in it. Church, say amen. Oh, let the church sing amen. Amen. God has spoken. Let the church gonna give you something special now to take you home and take you through the week Monday through Saturday oh think about the words of this song and may it bless you real good 901.3 on your FM down yours truly that's the Bob Dig saying have a blessed week and may this song be a blessing to you sister flower a blessing to you Sister Plummer, a blessing to you. Sister Clark. Ninety-one point three on your FM dial. This is Tabernacle Sunday. We'll see you again. Bible study, seven fifteen Wednesday.